right, so that clip you just saw was actually recorded on this 20-year-old camera here. This is a Sony Handycam from 2003, and it was one of my first cameras ever. I don't know how I sold my mom on this thing, considering, like, we didn't really have much money back in the day, and this thing was super, super expensive, but somehow I did, and I made some of my first, first videos ever on this thing right here. I was cleaning out the basement the other day at my parents' house, and I came across it, and I was super, super stoked, and even more stoked to see that it still worked. So just in case you have one of these laying around your house, maybe your parents have one, or maybe you found one at the camera store or something like that, I'm gonna show you how to take the footage off of here and make it into editable MP4s. So here's how this pretty much works. When the disc gets full, it'll the camera will tell you the capacity is too full for a movie you can't record anymore. So you want to, with this specific camera, you navigate over to the settings menu. So hit the setup button on the side, and that'll bring up this blue menu here. And from there, you want to scroll down to finalize. You hit the ready button, and then put the camera down to avoid any vibrations, and let the camera execute this function. What this does is it finalizes all the files on there and kind of gets it ready for uh, a DVD player or like a DVD playing app because back, back in the day, it's kind of what you would have used to watch these, but we're not going to use those. We're going to actually use the finalized files to get our playable MP4s. So let it go through its process and you'll see it completes. And then you want to plug your camera into your computer. This might differ depending what kind of camera you're working on. With this specific Sony Handycam, I use a mini B USB cable. I actually use the same one that I use to charge my PSP. So I plug that into a USB and that plugs into my computer. And then I'm able to put the camera in USB mode by enabling the playback function on the camera. And then that puts it into USB mode. It does take a minute on my computer to pop up. Um, it wants to open the DVD player first. So I'll force quit the DVD player. But then in my finder, under locations, I'll see a random name. I'm pretty sure it's the name, the default name of the disk. It'll pop up in under location. So you want to click that, and then in there you'll see two folders, one for photos and one for videos. What I do is take that whole video TS folder and transfer it to my desktop. That way I can unplug the camera. I don't have to worry about using any files of the camera anymore. So once you drag it to your desktop, then you want to open up this app called Handbrake. It's a free app. You can get it online. Handbrake is, from what I understand, like a video conversion app. So you want to open up Handbrake and then point Handbrake at the location of the files you just dragged off. So for this camera, it separates the footage into very random chapters. I'm still trying to figure out what, how the chapters kind of even get separated, but... When I point handbrake to the folder, it'll give me the different chapters. So um, under title, uh, select one, and then you hit start to render it. It'll go through a quick rendering process, and then boom, you have your file. And then you want to redo that, obviously, for two and three, so you have all your footage. And I like doing this with the files on my actual desktop. That way, things just seem to go a little bit quicker. I don't have to worry about the camera losing battery or disconnecting or anything like that. Once you render them, then it will leave you with these f the MP4 files, and you can use these to do whatever you want with. These MP4 files will contain the whole disk, so you're going to have to go through and kind of scrub and figure out which clips you want. So it definitely helps to kind of have an editor, have an editing program to use, whether it's Premiere or something free on your phone or whatever. But that is how you get the files off the camera and on your computer. That is pretty much how it's done. It's not totally foolproof. I've had some of my disks, some of my files mess up to where I'm not able to pull every single file off the disk. Not really sure why. It is fun to mess around with. It definitely gives you a really interesting aesthetic. So whether you're into fingerboarding or filmmaking, it's super fun to mess around with these old cameras. They are super cool, super fun, and actually pretty capable. This is a shorter video today. Don't forget, I have a website, anxietyoffline.com, where I sell fingerboard obstacles and supplies, such as bushings and grip tape. Stop by, check them out. I recently dropped this new line of obstacles that has metal coping here. Very, very fun. I have not taken this one off my desk. I've been sessioning it pretty much all week, constantly. So check this out at anxietyoffline.com. 
And if you've got any questions, please drop them below in the comments. I love hearing from you all. If you watched the whole video, leave the word DVD down below in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Anxiety Offline, and I'll see you next time. Peace.